good to have you. Sir. Thank you for having me, Bob. Thank you so much. Stubbornness is using the wrong key. Wow. Consistently. Mm. That's what stubbornness is. Wow. It's you using the wrong key faithfully. Wow. That's what stubbornness is. Because if you ever think about it, when someone is stubborn, they are doing something constantly, believing that it works the way that they're doing it. Mm -hmm. wow. And so the, um, the things that Samuel brought to Saul's attention was your stubbornness is um, idolatry. Mm -hmm. your, your rebellion is as witchcraft. So if we look at these two elements, when we get rebellion as witchcraft, we know that rebellion is going against a thing, but how is stubbornness different? It's not that you're just going against a thing. It means that you're defending what God is going against. So when, when you're rebellious, you're going against something that God stands for. When you're stubborn, God is going against something you stand for. So stubbornness is where God is actually taking more of the initiative to rebel against you and say, come on, let's change this. Let's switch this out. I don't want to see this in your nature and your, your ways and how you uh, uh, project yourself and what you're aiming at and what you're pursuing. Did you know that everybody's desire has got to be renewed daily? It's wrong. It's an evil nature in everybody to worry, to fear. It's an evil nature in everybody to try to figure out their life. It's an evil nature in everybody. Everybody. Everybody is concerned about themselves. You can be anointed and evil at the same time. Because the anointing just means that God gave you his word. He gave you his info. He gave you his methods. He gave you his knowledge. But it doesn't mean that you're thinking on that knowledge all the time. So can somebody be anointed and have demons? Yes. Because if I decipher this clearly for you, according to my wisdom mantle, You'll understand that the anointing is simply what God gives to you for you to come out of all of your evils. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't mean that you have come out yet. Wow. Wow. The children of Israel are anointed and demon possessed. Wow. Miriam is anointed, but she still has dishonor. She's still a gossiper. Because the anointing has taught her how not to gossip. It doesn't mean that she stops gossiping. That's why you can be anointed and lustful. There are homosexuals that are anointed. There are lesbians that are anointed. Let me shock you. There are transgenders that are anointed. We have transgenders right now that's anointed. What's the major anointing on a transgender? Repentance. Mm -hmm. The anointing of repentance is on everybody. Wow. Mm -hmm. Even traitors, Jones. <laughs> <laughs> the anointing of repentance is on everybody. That's why the workers say, call upon the Lord and you shall be saved. So there's an anointing on you to call upon the Lord. Mm -hmm. The anointing doesn't stop your personality from being wicked, from being evil, from being wrong. Let me turn that off. Yes, sir. 
they, they, they are, are children, so nobody. <laughs> the anointing does not stop you from thinking wrong. The anointing gives you the power to stop thinking wrong. And if you don't yield to that anointing, you keep thinking wrong, though you're anointed. Mm -hmm. Wow. So, son, Peter has an anointing to pray, but he sleeps. Mm -hmm. Wow. So he has power over the sleep, but yet he sleeps. The sleep ends up having power over him. So it's not a investigation on whether or not he was given power to pray. Mm -hmm. He was given power to pray, but the power was not used. That's what be going on with you too. You're not using the powers that you have. Feed my sheep is what Jesus is telling Peter. Feed my sheep. And then he goes to one place and says, feed the lambs. Mm -hmm. So what's the difference between the lambs and the sheep? The sheep are people that's hearing God's voice. They're hearing God's mentorship. They're hearing God's rebukes. The lambs are those that are now going through persecution. Mm -hmm. They are now experiencing the severity of their cross. They are in the stages of crucifying old natures. They're in the stages of murdering malice, strife, lust, fear, worry. They are doing the dirty work. So the lambs and the sheep are both beneficial. So everybody should have a lamb and a sheep in operation in their personality. Mm -hmm. Because the sheep is where you hear from God. But the lamb is where you take what God is saying and you use that to nurture your self-denial. What do you see there? This it's so powerful, Papa. What you say, what you're saying right now, uh, that there's always like a uh, evil um, in us that needs to be uh, brought out every day, and by doing that, it's calling upon the Lord, like to receive the power to overcome the evil that tries to take us away from achieving being a lamb to receive. To go through the process of of getting uh, to carrying our cross more severe, to overcome the stubbornness, to overcome all those things that are against God, mm -hmm. and 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 you know it that's against God, but you try to protect it when you're stubborn. You try to to hold on to that so tight that you make. God seems like he doesn't know what he's doing, but in reality, it's you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, you're mm -hmm. the one that doesn't know anything. Mm -hmm, you're the mm -hmm. one that needs to, your mind needs to be renewed and mm -hmm. change and submit mm -hmm. to what the Spirit of the Lord is saying right now. And don't defend it and don't try to make excuses because when you do that, now you're standing up against what God is saying in that moment and you won't be able to receive what he has for you in that particular day. In your life. And the thing about it is this. Being anointed is so deceptive if you don't carry it correctly. Because there's an element of you that strongly knows that God has already told you something. Mm -hmm. Wow. And then there's another element of you that's not even engaging or entertaining what he said. So imagine you have these two dimensional departments of you being demonstrated at one moment. You know what God tells you, but yet you're not operating what God tells you. And so even if you are rebuked, you have a moment in time where you could hop right back over to the anointing and say, I already know that. Mm -hmm. But you're hopping back into the anointing for um, justification of self. Mm -hmm. You're not hopping into the anointing for the demonstration in your behavior. Mm -hmm. Wow. Wow. 
So, so this is the scary thing about life. And this is why many people will end up in hell because you, 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 you're, you're going to hell not because you was ignorant of divine knowledge. It's because you hopped over to that divine knowledge when God was rebuking you for not doing it. Mm. Wow. Mm -hmm. and, and you say, well, I already know that. Y yeah, you know that, but nobody else knows that when they look at your behavior. Mm. Wow. wow. <laughs> and God is saying, I don't know that you know that when I look at your fruits. Mm -hmm. Wow. And so... um. I want you to always remember this. There is going to be elements of you throughout different days in your life. Every day is going to be different. But you, you have to recognize, am I a, a carrier of a lot of knowledge or am I a carrier of a lot of decisions that reflect that knowledge? Mm. Wow. That's so good. Wow. <laughs> What'd you say? <laughs> it's so good. Like, because our, our decision needs to be based off uh, of the knowledge that we've been receiving from every teaching that you've been giving us throughout this time. So it, it's crazy how you have to hop over to the anointing, mm -hmm. but not to become better and, and submit yourself, but to protect. Uh, I already knew, you already said this to me, but I still got to mm -hmm. stand on what I believe is right. Mm -hmm. In reality, you're wrong. <laughs> you, you, if you're going to hop over to the anointing, it's for you to submit and, and be humble. And if if the information was given to you, mm. then revisit that moment. Okay, that information was for me to be delivered and not to experience this moment again. Right. So, right. use the information and take the right decisions every day. Don't go back to where, where you was before the King Jesus found you. Because there's nothing there for you. So just keep keep going forth and, and listen to the not to the divine knowledge that is being given to you and, and trust that divine knowledge that's gonna set you free. And you're gonna walk in a heavier anointing to overcome whatever is trying to defeat you. In this life. Son, is it true that every day you have to subdue evil that you used to commit in your thought life? Yes. Every day. Talk about that. Every day you, you have to submit your that evil that you have to sub subdue that evil that tries to overcome you every day because your soul might always wants to try to revisit those moments that you have lived before. But your spirit mind is trying to get you to moments that you need to live that is going to be beneficial for you and for the work of God. Right. So, it says, um, get rid of all those um, thoughts that try to exalt above the knowledge of God. All the knowledge that you have received, there's going to be thoughts that are going to come up against that knowledge. And that's how you base your, your decisions off of that knowledge. If you mm -hmm. yield to that knowledge, you're going to make a good decision. Mm -hmm. But if you yield to those evil thoughts, then you're going to make the wrong decisions. And now you're going to end up in a place where you're going to feel like there is... Um, there, that there, you're going to feel that disconnection. Mm -hmm. And that's what Satan wants. He wants you to disconnect from where, the, where you are getting life from. Exactly. So every day you have to subdue all those evil thoughts. All those evil... Um, um, decisions that, that might come in during that day. Exactly. Because um, evil is, 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 for everyone, evil is simply, and simply your former thought process, mm. your former thought reaction. That's all evil is for everybody. Wow. And then we have um, several elements of evil as well. 
you have the former thought process, but then you have the thought process that's currently um, flirting with you. Mm. Wow. Wow. You have the thought process that's currently flirting with you, but it's all off of information that you already have heard. Mm -hmm. So, son, people don't think about their life insurance unless they have information about life insurance. Mm -hmm. So the worries that you have is not predicated on you just being ignorant. The worries that you have is based upon the former knowledge that you have received. Mm -hmm. So nobody worries about taking their child to the dentist until they have knowledge even about the dentist, about cavities, about uh, tooth pain, about... Uh, deterioration in the gums. It, those things are, are are becoming concerns because you have knowledge about the teeth. You have knowledge about the dentist. You have knowledge about the gums. You have knowledge. Of, so all of the worries in life are connected to the knowledge that you formerly had, the thought process that you formerly had. The Bible says, fear not. <laughs> Prophet Joshua Holmes says, fear not. Fear is a decision, mm -hmm. and it takes you down a path where God doesn't enjoy you. Mm -hmm. Number one, you have to look at life from the Father's anger from now on. When the Father is looking at you, and you twiddling your fingers, worrying about how you're going to deal with this, how you're going to deal with this, it's stupid. Mm -hmm. It's stupid. Because now you have put yourself in the seat of God. And the Lord, all he asks you to do is follow my mother loving instruction. That's all he tells you to do. That's all he's telling you to do. All he's telling you to do is answer my question. Do what I say. Follow what I'm instructing you. That's all he's telling you to do. But now you done found something else to do. You found a way to worry about your life. So now you're commingling an assignment that goes against the assignment he already gave you. It's like if you tell somebody to stand at a gate and hold your bag. They're standing at the gate and hold the bag, but then they go get the lawnmower and start cutting the grass. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you hear, nye, 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 nye. and you get irritated. What's the noise? Hey, hey, what's, what's this noise I'm hearing? And this is what God does. He gets irritated because there's another sound that he's hearing in your mind. He's telling you to focus on standing at the gate and carrying the bag. You done got on a lawnmower. You done got the edger. You edging the grass. Wow. And God looking at you like, where's the bag? Where's the standing at the gate? You done adapted to another assignment that I didn't even give to your brain. And now you worried about, oh, let me make sure that the grass is cut correctly. And let me make sure I go over this other side of the grass that got too much. It looked like an afro. It looked like Steve Harvey before, before Bernie Mac, you know, passed away. It looked like it looked, it's, it's the afro grass over here. And you, you all over the place. Oh, let me make sure that I get the tweezers. I got to make sure I got to get this out there. And now your brain is concerned about what God didn't give you to be concerned. The concern, the, the, the brain was supposed to be investing energy in standing at the gate and holding the bag. Now the brain is all about the grass. The, the brain is about watering the grass. The, the brain is about cutting. The brain is about edging. The brain is about going over spots that's still rough. And now you are an irritating experience to God. Wow. God was only going to get pleasure in your brain being on standing at the gate and holding the bag. And saints, I want you to see this. Everybody has an evil nature of worry and fear. And these are things that you're going to have to confront throughout the course of your life. You have to bring every thought into subjection to the obedience of Christ. Casting down vain imaginations. 
The reason why the Bible talk about vain imaginations, because they are divine imaginations. They are imaginations that come from God, that are prophetic, that are accordance with your edification, your growth, your progress, your inspiration, your productivity, your fruitfulness, your wisdom. There are imaginations that are evil. They are vain. That means that when you think on these things, they're not doing anything for you. You're wasting your time. You're wasting the moments where God could trust you further because when he sees that there is a place in you that will heed evil and it will yield to that ponderance, it's not a good look for you because God knows I can't trust you with the next place. I need to get rid of this. Saints, let me just tell you this. I've, I've experienced um, low money. I experienced grow money. I experienced flow money. I experienced no money. I experienced uh, grow money. And I experienced flow money. When I experienced no money, when I experienced grow money, and when I experienced flow money, my mentality didn't switch off of the categories. And I refused to let it switch off of the categories in any place. I'm not afraid of no money because the mentality that I had with flow money and grow money is still gonna be in operation until no money becomes grow money and flow money. When I have grow money, I don't trust in the growth. When I have flow money, I don't trust in the flow. When I have no money, I don't trust in the no. Wow. Wow. I don't trust the verdict that I can't have the money. That's what no. I don't trust in the no. Mm -hmm. So when I have grow money, I don't trust in the grow. When I have flow money, I don't trust in the flow. When I have no money, I don't trust in the no. I'm not letting that be the usher of my brain. So I let it burn. Wow. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so if you don't get this in operation now, even when you get flow money, you're still going to act like you ain't got no money. Mm -hmm. You're going to be worried mm -hmm. because the outside of money is not really creating how you think. You're thinking according to your your spirit, what you have chosen to entertain in the spirit world, how you have chosen to be. So there are, son, there's, a, there's people that have millions of dollars that are worried because they need more millions in their mind. Wow. wow. And then there's people that have no money that's sleeping on the couch today. Mm -hmm. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> They're not even concerned that they don't have no money. So the mentality is not being decided by how much people have. It is being decided on how you have chosen to carry yourself mentally. And where is your mental health? Wow. You're not mentally healthy if you're not exercising peace. Mm. Wow. wow. The Bible doesn't say that the peace of God shall guard your, your heart and mind. It says, let the peace of God. Guard your heart and mind. Let it rule in your heart and mind. I believe that's in Colossians uh, chapter 3, probably. Let the peace of God rule in your hearts and mind. It didn't say the peace of God was going to rule. It says let it. Wow. If I'm letting something rule, that means that I'm giving it permission. I'm opening up myself. I'm volunteering. I'm becoming vulnerable to it. And I am letting it enter me. That's what it means, let it. So if I can let it, I can also avoid it. I can prevent it. Wow. So what angle are you choosing to take now? Because even if you get a million dollars, you're going to have two million worries. And it's going to be like you have zero dollars. Wow. Wow. How do people win the lottery and then still go broke? They have more worries than wealth. Mm -hmm. Wow. <laughs> wow. Son having more worries than wealth, and they submitted to their worries mm -hmm. and lost their wealth. Mm. Wow. 
Because worries is a never ending journey with Satan. Mm. Wow. And Satan never going to let worry stop. Mm -hmm. Because even when you done handled everything, Satan telling you, well, what, what about next time? <laughs> well, where you going? <laughs> where you and oh, you forgot this too. <laughs> and what about this time? Worry is a deceptive exchange with you and Satan, because Satan will make you feel like once I do this, I don't fix the worry. But you don't understand. Once you fix that, worry done led you to something else to worry about. Mm, wow. Because worry is a fallen angel. Mm. So when, when you worry, you, you could fix the thing that worry magnified. Oh, oh, fix this. You fixed it. Worry will lead you to something else that you need to fix. Wow. And when you done fix that, it done took you a couple weeks. You done fix that. Worry done led you to something else. Mm -hmm. And some worry is dangerous. Let me say this, um, and, and I'm, I'm going to hop on our apostolic anointing. When you sin against God and miss God, it's not even good for your health. Mm -hmm. It creates headaches. When you miss God, your body will tell on you. Wow. When you miss God, you'll have a headache. Some part of your body will ache. Just remember what I'm telling you. Your physical body will snitch on you that you miss God. Mm -hmm. The next day when you wake up, you'll feel disconnected. You'll feel like a cord was broken. You'll feel like your water broke before time. That <laughs> the baby coming out of five months. <laughs> wow. You'll feel like your water broke at five months. You'll feel like you just got robbed. Because you did. Sin robs you of the original time of your promotion. When you miss God, you'll feel sickness in your body. Your body will snitch on you when you do what God doesn't want you to do. Saints, why do people often repent the next day? Because oftentimes the next day is carrying the consequence. Mm -hmm. When someone drinks, it's someone calls something called a hangover. Mm -hmm. They didn't feel the hangover when they was hanging over. Mm -hmm. Right. The hangover happened when they was laying down. <laughs> when they was hanging over, they didn't feel the hangover. Right, right. <laughs> Same way you don't feel the burn when you turn, when you feel the burn. So things are not happening immediately while you're in the thrill of doing it. The thrill overshadows the bill you'll have to pay. Mm. Wow. So Moses, when he's in the thrill of striking the rock, he doesn't know the bill is never entering into the promised land wow. in his body. The thrill doesn't reveal the bill that you'll have to pay. So saints, you got to get out even the element because when you're in worry, you thrill yourself. You thr Did you know that fear is thrilling? Wow. When someone is in fear, they'll thrill themselves. You ever thought that a, 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 a spider was in your hair and it was just your hair? <laughs> you ever felt that a bug was on you? And is imagine how you hit yourself. You don't want nobody to hit you, but now you're hitting yourself. <laughs> right. You will punch yourself in the eye because you felt a bug was on your eye. Isn't that funny? That you'll hit yourself on the back like a gorilla? <laughs> <laughs> you're hit, you don't want nobody to hit you on the back. Not the back, the back. <laughs> but you will hit yourself on the back. <laughs> because you fear that there's a bug on you. Mm. You ever saw a shadow run past at night and the devil tell you that's a rat? And you, <laughs> you see something run past 
and that's just your shadow, you had lifted up your arm, but you were so quick to imagine a creature. Wow. Since you could put your jacket on the door and wake up and think somebody's standing right there and it's your jacket. Wow. And it's so quick that people cling to fear. The mind wants to grab fear so fast. And when you have fear, look how your body starts to move in the direction of fear. The same way faith without works is dead. Faith, why it's so powerful? Because when faith takes over your mind, your body starts moving in pleasure towards God. Mm. 